like to engage you in thinking about the last 113 years and the next 37 years, the time frame of 150 years from 1900 to 2050. How's the world done? Uh, Cambridge University Press, my publisher, cleverly superimposed these two pictures, a Polish city from 1900, and in the background you see these very futuristic buildings that could have been built in 2050. They're actually being built right now in South Korea. And they emphasize the immense change an amazing change that's happened in that 150-year period. I've asked 21 of the world's top economists to tell us how much have global problems cost the world from 1900 and to 2050. We're looking across a wide range of different areas, anywhere from air pollution and armed conflicts to malnutrition and water and sanitation. I think everyone would agree, yes, these are some of the big issues of the world. They're not all of the issues, but they're definitely a huge part of them. And I'd like to share with you how have we been doing across all these areas? Let me just get right into it. In some ways, you could say the biggest issue is human health. Sure, it's incredibly important to have great education or have a great environment, but if you're dead, it kind of doesn't matter. So let's take a look at human health. In 1900, the average person on this planet lived to be 32 years of age. 32 years! Today, that number is up to 67 years. Over the past 113 years, we've more than doubled our life expectancy on this planet. By 2050, we expect it to be up to 76 years. That's a dramatic increase. And I think we fail to understand how amazing this is. Every month you live extra, our health system actually buys you an extra week. Isn't that amazing? Over the last couple of decades, for every decade we've lived longer, we've actually added two and a half years to our life expectancy. To a large extent, this is, of course, because we've dealt with some of the big problems in the world. We've eradicated smallpox, arguably the biggest killer in human history. It probably killed from 1900 to 1979, 400 million people, about three times the number of people that died in all the wars of the 20th century and all the major calamities of the 20th century. And in 1979, we eradicated smallpox. So 400 million people died is now gone. Likewise, immunization, one of the things we don't think very much about. In 1970, only one in 20 kids were immunized, typically rich world kids, against measles and whooping cough and a lot of other terrible diseases because of a unique cooperation between World Health Organization, UNICEF, World Bank, and aided by the Gates Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation. In 2000, just 30 years later, we had 85% of all kids in the world immunized saving about three million lives each year. Those are some of the amazing stories in human health. But I want to show you how we can translate this into something that we can then compare using economics. So let's try and take a look at what is the impact, how much has the lack of human health cost the world? Well, in 1900, the average person produced $1,200 per year. If you died, that was money the world didn't get. So take all those years we died, because we already died at 32 on average, and multiply it by all the people who died, and compare it to the total world production in 1900, and the answer is 32% of global world product was lost because of bad human health. It gives you a sense of proportion, and what it also does, it enables us to show what's the development across the century and a half. Today, that number is down to about 10%, and in 2050, we expect it to be about 5%. Of course, we are much richer and we value our lives much more, but at the same time, we also lose many fewer life years, which is why it's gone down dramatically. The amazing opportunity of doing this is, of course, now we can start comparing human health to all the other challenges that the world face. Let's take, for instance, education, obviously a huge issue that has great impact. And, and I think, you know, some of the things that we don't even have a sense of, back in 1900, the average person on the planet had about one year of schooling. Today, that number is about eight years, and in 2050, it'll be about 10 years. So to the ones of you who are still in school, sorry, you guys are going to stay longer in school. But the reality, of course, is that this has had a huge impact on human life quality. Take just illiteracy, which is how we measure the impact of lack of education. In 1900, we estimate that about 70% of all people in the world were illiterate. They just couldn't read and write. 
Yes, in uh, Western Europe and the U.S., it was probably only 16 percent. But just go to Eastern Europe and, and Russia, it was probably 75 percent. In Sub-Saharan Africa, it was 94 percent that were illiterate. Today, that number is 20 percent. Yes, most kids get to learn to read and write, but there's still a legacy of adults that still don't read. And even in 2050, we still expect about 12 percent illiteracy. This has a huge impact. Take, for instance, Pakistan and South Korea in 1950. They're about equal, both on GDP and on schooling. But since then, South Korea has zoomed off. They basically have 12 years of great education now, and their GDP has increased 23-fold. At the same time, Pakistan is struggling to just get six years of education, not a very good one at that, and their GDP per capita has only increased threefold. So if we take the total cost again and look at how much has that cost, the fact that we've been illiterate, that 70% were illiterate in 1900, the cost was about 12% of global world product. Since then, it's declined, so it's now down to about 7%. In 2050, we expect it to be down to about 4%. Likewise, with malnutrition, one of the oldest scourges of the world, there's still about a billion people that don't get enough food. And we don't know how to measure how much food people got back in 1900. But the researchers then did something ingenious because they know how tall you were. And tall is very well correlated to how well you were fed when you grow up. If you're tall, chances are you didn't suffer from malnutrition. If you're short, there's a much greater chance that you were stunted as a child. And actually, over the last 113 years, the average height in the developing countries have grown about five centimeters, or two inches. Doesn't sound like a lot, but that's the difference for a lot of people between being malnourished and not. So if we can look at what was the impact in 1900, it was about 11% that we lost because of malnutrition. Today, that number is down to about 6.7% in 2050. It'll be down to 5%. You probably also see the slight curve up, which is unlike some of the other curves we see. That's basically because the West, especially the US, fixed malnutrition around the Second World War, rest of uh, Europe and Russia, probably uh, towards the end of last century. But many in the developing world only starting now, Latin America, uh, a little bit later, uh, Southeast Asia, and Africa, unfortunately, last.